As many of you already know, the flounder, as you can see, looks very different from other fish. Traditionally, most fish are symmetrically shaped, but the eyes of flatfish, like flounder and sole, are positioned on one side, and they swim not by flipping their fins left and right, but up and down. What's even more interesting is that these fish are born symmetrical, but within three weeks, one eye starts migrating to the opposite side. By about a month, their faces are completely distorted. Even Charles Darwin, the father of evolutionary theory, found the peculiar developmental process and appearance of flounders baffling in terms of their evolutionary path. This led to the eyes of the flounder becoming a prime target for critics of evolutionary theory. In particular, in 1871, British biologist George Mivart criticized Darwin's theory, contending that if the flounder's eye evolved gradually to the other side, the intermediate forms would have no survival advantage. Darwin himself, in the sixth edition of On the Origin of Species, regrettably made a misstep by attempting to explain the evolution of the flounder's eye with Lamarck's theory of use and disuse. Oh. He proposed that some ancestors of the flounder might have sunk to the sea floor to escape predators, and gradually those shifting one eye to the opposite side increased. This acquired trait continued to be inherited, leading to the modern flounder. The flounder therefore became a fish that sowed considerable confusion in the field of evolutionary biology. This confusion persisted well into the 20th century, until 1933, when American geneticist Richard Goldschmidt suggested that the evolution of the flounder's eye was not gradual, but a rapid adaptation due to a random genetic mutation. However, as he didn't identify any specific genes responsible for this change, his theory was yeah. not widely accepted as definitive. However, this still did not establish the theory of gradual evolution as the prevailing one. The reason for that is that no intermediate fossil species showing the transition from symmetric to asymmetric eyes was discovered. Because of this, the evolution of the founder's eye has been a subject of extensive debate among evolutionary biologists. Then, in 2008, a graduate student at the University of Chicago named Friedman made a significant discovery that shed light on the secret of the flounder's evolutionary process. The key was in the fossils of a fish called Amphistium, which lived 50 million years ago. From the fossils, it seemed that these were ordinary-looking fish, but Friedman thought differently. He believed that these fish bore a resemblance to flounders, and after traveling across Europe examining numerous Amphistium fossils, he made a surprising find. The position of the opposite eye was on top of the head. From the front, it looked like this. That's right. This fossil represented an intermediate species in the evolution from symmetric fish to flounders. Friedman then discovered another unidentified fish fossil at the Natural History Museum oh. in Vienna. He carefully applied hydrochloric acid to restore its original form and found that, like in this photo, while the right eye was in a normal position, the left eye was located toward the top of the head. He named this fish Heteronectus chenetti, which translates to different swimmer, in reference to its unique swimming style, similar to flounders. Based on the evidence from these fossils, Friedman argued that flounders didn't evolve suddenly and dramatically, but rather gradually transitioned from symmetric bony fish through stages like Amphistium and Heteronectus where one eye gradually moved to the top of the head to reach their current form. But then, this raises a question. Given this gradual evolution, what survival benefit did their asymmetrical eyes offer that led to their natural selection? Scientists found a clue in a fish living in Africa called Nimbochromis living stony. These fish hunt by lying flat on the seabed, waiting for prey while pretending to be dead. This implies that lying flat on the seabed is a behavior advantageous for survival. 
Some scientists propose that similarly, certain flounders and soles began a bottom-dwelling lifestyle and evolved by twisting their skulls so that one eye moved upwards ah. to prevent one eye from being buried in the sand. But isn't that a bit strange? Why didn't they evolve to have a body that spread out on both sides, like rays? Evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins discusses this in his book, The Blind Watchmaker. Flounders and soles were different from rays right from the start. Rays, originating from wide-bodied, cartilaginous sharks, contrasted with flounders and soles, which evolved from vertically elongated bony fish. For bottom-dwelling adaptation, these fish found altering eye position, while remaining flat, more beneficial than broadening their bodies. This means that although flounders and rays are separate lineages, they only appear similar in behavior, swimming, and appearance due to convergence evolution. Since they started from different points, they didn't necessarily follow the same evolutionary paths. Recently, studies have surfaced explaining the mechanism from a molecular perspective, where the asymmetrical pigment expression in flounder embryo skin influences cell formation around the eyes, gradually causing one eye to shift to the opposite side. Isn't it remarkable to discover such a rich evolutionary tale hidden within the ordinary flounder? Science is a window to the world. And this has been Science Dream. Thank you for watching.